Morning, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to this week's episode of Mindset RX. I am your host, and I'm so happy to be back in my home office in Arizona. And I'm glad you're here with me today, whether you're with me live, which if you are, I would love to hear from you. So say hello in the in the comments. And if you're watching or listening to the recording, let me know that too, because I love to see how many lives we're able to touch through Mindset RX. You know, I'm here every week, rain or shine, to help and to support emotionally intelligent leaders who are ready to create a positive, productive, and purposeful week at work. And today's topic, a very important one, one that has come up over and over again recently, which is everybody's burned out again. In fact, people are talking now about the second wave of burnout. We kind of thought that things would, and I'm using air quotes here, get back to normal. Um, But now we're in a new transition, whether that transition is going back to work or kind of buckling down for another extension on the, the stay at home and work or not wanting to go back to work at all and really wanting to renegotiate with employers about how we're going to live and work now and in the future. Those are all things at top of mind for the leaders who I've been talking with lately. And I want to just give a shout out. Lana Hawk is here this morning. So nice to see you. You are one of our wonderful women leaders in the industry of finance. And I'm so happy that you're here with us. So today, when we get started in just a minute, we're going to talk about five new solutions I have to managing burnout, recovering from burnout. And, you know, spoiler alert, listen, there's nothing new under the sun, actually, but I do want to give you some advice on how you can move forward through this time, this period in the world, um, with some grace and some ease without a lot of grit and tenacity and hard work. Those are kind of pre-2020 mindsets and attitudes. And we really are being invited to adopt and to even, dare I say, embody other attitudes like hope, like grace, like flow, like optimism now and in the future. And I actually believe very strongly that those are the attitudes and mindsets that are going to help us elevate and move into the next phase of of whatever's going on in the world. So before we get started, I'm going to do what I usually do, which is to get my mindfulness bells out here. And we're going to do just a little mindful listening exercise. If you've been here with me before, you know the drill. I have my mindfulness bells. We're going to ring those three times. And your only job is to listen until you can't hear the sound anymore. So do yourself a favor and just put aside everything else for just a few minutes. Give yourself this time and this space to just be present. So let's go ahead and breathe in love and grace and just listen. There we go. And just notice what you noticed when you were listening for those bells. I was noticing just a little bit of sense of rushing, of busyness, of I only have 10 more minutes to work with with these guys today and I want to fill them up and give them everything that I can. And you and I both know that not all all the problems of the world are going to be solved in the next 10 minutes. And then I was reminded of something that occurred to me recently. What if we stopped looking at time like a commodity, something that we trade dollars for hours? What if we stopped looking at it like um, an ogre who's, you know, keeping track of every minute of every day and what you're doing with it and calculating your productivity? And what if instead we, we looked at time as an unhurried river? What if time were just that, an unhurried river, not a lazy river, but an unhurried one? How would that change things for you as you go about your day? 
Because listen, time is one of the major factors that we have to consider when we are, when we're analyzing burnout, when we're looking at for solutions for burnout, there's a lot of time pressure. There's a lot of productivity pressure and it's not unless and until you change your relationship with time that things will actually start shifting for you. So didn't intend to talk about that today, but that's just a little insight that often will come up after a moment of mindfulness. Because now when you're in the present moment, you can actually hear things differently. And the things that occur to you while you are in a moment of mindfulness are sometimes the most potent and powerful innovations that you can contribute to your team, to your organization, and even to your life, actually. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with these five new solutions for burnout. And as I said, there's nothing new under the sun, but I do want to give you some new ways of thinking about burnout. If you've heard me talking about burnout lately, I just want to <laughs> reiterate this. Burnout doesn't go away just because you go on vacation for a week or two weeks or even a month. Burnout doesn't go away after a long holiday, which a lot of Americans are coming back from after the long Labor Day weekend. And I want to caveat that because it actually could start going away in both of those scenarios if you do your inner work. But remember, wherever you go, there you are. And if you're just doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result, you're going to be disappointed. And I think that as leaders, we've reached a place where it's no longer okay to keep doing the same thing over and over again. There are some questions that leaders are asking right now about what's the point of all of this and what's my purpose and how can I be a contribution and what's the meaning of not just my work, but my life. And those deeper existential questions are the questions that invite that inner work to actually start to take hold. But if you're not willing to look inside of yourself, if you're not willing to look at your heart, your emotions, your patterns, your behaviors, your thoughts, and you just keep doing the same thing over and over again, the burnout's not going to go away, no matter how many Mai Tais on the beach you drink. In fact, probably the more Mai Tais you drink on the beach, the less likely the burnout's going to go away. Okay? So just remember that. And I took some notes here. So just if, I'm, if you're not seeing me looking at the screen, that's what I'm, I'm doing here. So if you want an outer transformation, if you want results to be different in your world, at work, at home, the inner work is where you're, you're going to get started. I know, I know, I work with people in tech and healthcare and fintech, and y'all don't like to talk about emotions and you don't necessarily like to talk about inner work, but I am telling you, now is the time that this is coming forward as the most important thing because you're not a robot, you're not a clone, you're a human and humans have emotions. And it's what you do with those emotions and how you understand your emotions and how you understand other people's emotions that's really going to make a difference in terms of how you are engaging with work and your subsequent recovery from burnout. The other thing I want to remind you too is what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for you. So a word of caution here, when you start looking around and seeing how other people are managing their symptoms of burnout, or even if they don't appear to be burned out, and you start thinking, well, maybe if I do what he does, or maybe if I do what she does, I want you to be real mindful of that because what works for that person may not work for you. In fact, for most emotionally intelligent people, I'll say, don't look to the rock. Don't look to the unflappable ones. You can look for inspiration. I think that that's important. But the way they're managing their energy and the way their nervous system is wired is going to be slightly different from the way yours is wired. So what's working for them may not work for you. If you look at somebody and you can't understand why that person or how that person is working as long and as hard and as extensively as they do, you can get caught in a system of comparison, which is no good for burnout either, and trying to mimic what they're doing 
with your own life. But if you're not wired that way, you're going to run into some problems physically, emotionally, and even from a productivity and creativity perspective. So be real mindful of that. Don't compare yourself to what somebody else is doing with their own mindfulness. All right. So instead of looking to somebody else, you can look for examples, but don't try to do exactly what they're doing because it may or may not work for you. Instead, here's what I want you to do. I want you to make a decision and take responsibility for your own recovery first. And this goes for every level of leadership. Your people look to you to set the tone, to carry the vision, to manage the energy of the team, of the division, of the organization. And if you want to see system-wide changes, we have to, at the very top levels of organizations, start looking at well-being differently. We have to start looking at burnout recovery differently at, in some other way other than pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You have to. Because only a small percent of the population is actually wired to pull themselves up by the, their bootstraps, including me. I need a little bit more R&R time in order to be able to really give my best in the workplace. And maybe you're like that too. So once you take responsibility and make a decision that you're going to do your own inner work, now you have some interesting things that you can do. The first thing that you can do is observe and research your own patterns of behavior, your own attitudes toward work. What did you learn from your mom and your dad about work? What does your organization say about work? And not only what does your organization say, not only what does your organization say about work, but what is top leadership actually modeling for you around around burnout, around recovery from burnout. So take a look at that. And here's the thing, when you start really being introspective and doing your research, you can't unknow this information. You can ignore it, but you can't unknow it. So you're just gonna scrape a little bit beneath the surface and ask, what are my patterns? And where did they come from? What are the generational patterns around work? I know a lot of adults now, they're kids from the Midwest. I grew up in South Dakota through that whole plains belt of people who grew up on ranches and farms, whose generations before kids, they had kids to work on the farm, not because they love them, but just because they needed more help on the farm. And so we carry those patterns with us in our cellular memory, in our DNA. That's the influence from our genetics and the generations that came before us. And if we're not aware of them, we're not able to do anything with them. Once you are aware of them, now we can work with what's going on in the patterns for you. And how does that show up? How does that show up for you at work? So think about that. And also think about, are you the kind of person who you get up in the morning, you feel this adrenaline surge and off you go off to the races and who's chasing you. And this happens at every level, whether you're an individual contributor or the leader of a, an organization, there's always somebody you're reporting into, whether it's the board or your, or your boss or your manager. But whose mask have you put on that person or that group of people? Just something to think about. It's important. I'm looking at the time, of course, this time always goes so fast, but I'm going to stick with it. The time is an unhurried river, and we're going to move through this together today. How's that sound? All right. Here's the next thing. After you've taken a look at your own patterns, now you can start to cultivate some new behaviors and some new ways of thinking. But keep in mind, this is really important. Just because you know something, insight isn't actually enough to create transformation. Insight is a step. You get an aha moment. Oh, that's where I got that. But it's not enough to change the behavioral patterns that are associated with that 
an underlying influence. So I want you to really get that. Insight is not enough. And now I want to kind of a drum roll here, please, because this is kind of my item number four on our list today, but this is important. I don't, I want you to stop treating all of the self-care knowledge and tools that you already have access to. Because listen, organizations in the last, before COVID and before, you know, all the things that have happened in the last 18 months, organizations were already moving toward giving, you know, a lot of resources for self-care, for burnout recovery and so on. So it's not lack of resources. It's not lack of knowledge or understanding about these tools and techniques and practices, is it? Let's be honest. So I don't want you to treat your self-care toolbox like I treat dental floss. So I have a quick story to tell you. Some of you might have already heard this, but about 10 years or so, I was at the dentist and I kind of periodically get into trouble about not flossing my teeth as much as I should, which is every day. Don't judge me. But at the end of my appointment, my dental hygienist was kind of shaking her head. Robin, you really need to floss your teeth every day, she said. And, and as she said that, she hands me two handfuls, two handfuls of dental floss. And I looked at her like a deer in the headlights. But I said, I said something that is, was true. I said, I don't need any more dental floss. I have plenty of dental floss because I don't floss every day. Dental, the availability of dental floss is not my problem. So when I, I want to just, I'll build that bridge for you then. When I think about self-care techniques and tools, you've reached a place where you probably have a myriad of tools that you can use that you know to use, like exercise and getting enough sleep and not drinking so much wine and drinking more water, meditation, talking to somebody, going to church or synagogue or some kind of spirit, getting your spiritual needs met, like all of these things are really important. So if you have all of these tools in your toolbox and you're not using them, then the problem is not that you don't have enough tools in your toolbox, is it? Now we have to look at what's stopping you from prioritizing your well-being over all of these other things. And that is an individual solution. That is not a one size fits all solution. Everybody has a different reason. And I'm not talking about excuses. Oh, I forgot or I got busy. There could be some other deeper underlying things. Listen, I know, you know, there, if people are still homeschooling or they've got the kids in school or they've got competing priorities, but there's something internal that has pulled you here to work with me for Mindset Rx. And thank goodness you are for this period of time, you are getting some activations around taking care of yourself. You have prioritized this time for yourself. So well done there. But really start asking yourself, not in a way of feeling bad at all. I'm not talking about that. But I want you to start asking what, what's inside of me that's creating the conditions for me to not do these things that I know are good for me. And therein lies the solution to your unique burnout recovery, we'll call it a protocol. What's stopping you from prioritizing yourself? So I know this is heavy for a Tuesday, but you know, this is, this is the truth of it. It's like, we have to look at these deeper things. And if we don't, at some point, if you still consider yourself a cog in a great machine or a robot or a clone, at some point, that machine is going to jam up and stop working. And what that looks like for humans is, you know, physical maladies, God forbid, cancer, God forbid, depression, anxiety, but those things happen. And they're signals from the system that I need to do something different. And here's the clue. If you can look back at what are the patterns that are influencing my relationship to work, there's probably the answer to why am I not prioritizing myself 
and my self-care within those patterns, whether they come from family, the organization, culture, society, whatever that is, whatever that is, is influencing the bigger question of what's stopping me from using these tools. What am I afraid of? What's the worst thing that could happen if I do start prioritizing myself? What's the best thing that could happen if I do start prioritizing myself? Those are some of the questions you can ask yourself as you're, as you're going through this process. And the last solution is an important one. I know apps are, I love apps. I have all the apps on my phone. But there is something about human to human contact. Oh, and by apps, I mean things like Headspace and Calm and, you know, some of those, some of those apps that really help help you kind of get into tune with meditation, with mindfulness practices. Um, but there is something healing and transformative about being shoulder to shoulder and linking arms with other people, either like this in an online live setting or even in an in-person setting, if you can do that, to be able to focus on recovering from burnout. This is not something that you're meant to do by yourself. It isn't. We're beyond the days of the do-it-yourself approach. It really is time to start linking arms. Look around your space. Who else wants is invested in optimal development? You don't have to walk around and say, are you burned out? Are you burned out? Who's burned out? That's they'll raise. You'll be able to know. But remember, it's not about rescuing them. It's about being a lighthouse, not a life raft in your own work, being the, the model, the example, but also creating an invitation, a space for other people to gather who care about the same thing. And I bet when you do, you will feel less isolated about your own experience with burnout and be able to see the system-wide cry for something different, a new way of living and working. And when you are somebody who's in the forefront of that, this means that you're on the leading edge of creating a new relationship with work. People are going to look to you. So gather, gather your people. Invite people. Let's have a lunch and learn. Let's do mindfulness practices and take turns leading it. Let's have a walking club at lunchtime. Even if you're still working from home, everybody walks at the same time. I set a date. I keep the date. Do you see? These are the investment in the community is a really important thing right now to move the community forward. So don't do this by yourself. And then the last thing I'll say is this, that I've been working with several organizations over the past 18 months on the very topic of burnout recovery, of getting something different other than grit, tenacity, and hard work to run the show and looking at new ways of living and working so you can keep your head and your heart in the game. And so if you are a top leader at an organization and you're listening to this, what I wanna just invite you to do, and I'm not attached, but I do create, my company creates bespoke solutions for organizations. And if you're part of one of those organizations, you know what I'm talking about. So private message me and let's have a conversation because in my, the way I'm seeing things is there's no more time to wait. We're in the middle of the great resignation. There are a lot of people, whether they're individual contributors in middle management or even senior leaders who are either leaving their organizations for what they think are greener pastures or just starting over, leaving and starting their own businesses and, and doing things that are more meaningful to them. And you know me, I'm invested in organizational transformation. So if that's you, I invite a conversation, no strings. Let's just have a conversation about how we might be able to work together and partner with each other to bring about some real transformation within your organization. All right, that's all I've got for you today. I send you 10,000 blessings as, as you go into the week. And I wanna invite you really take some time and evaluate what are those patterns that I'm seeing in myself and what are the patterns that I'm seeing in my team as well? 
And once you know the patterns, now we've got some clues to what the solutions actually are. All right, until next week. Oh, and tell your friends about this. If you're getting benefit from Mindset Rx, tell your friends, invite them to the next one. I'm here every Tuesday, rain or shine, 815 Pacific time. See you next week.